الله ولي الذين آمنوا يخرجهم من الظلمات إلى النور الله أكبر الله أكبر الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من والاه. We ask Allah subhanahu wa taala to help us recognize the truth and help us follow it, and we ask Him to help us recognize the evil and help us avoid it. The topic of my thought today is about a sabr, translated sometimes as patience and perseverance. A sabr is the quality that is mentioned the most in the Quran, more than 100 times, where the word sabr or a word related to that derived from that is mentioned in the Quran. What does a sabr mean? As Sheikh Al-Qaradawi said, a sabr is really to control oneself when facing things that you like or things that you dislike. Things that you like, like desires and temptations. Things that you dislike, loss or hardship. And since the things that we like and dislike are many, that's why the sphere of sabr includes pretty much everything that we do in this life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again mentioned it in many places in the Quran. وَلِرَبِّكَ فَاصْبِرْ وَاسْتَعِينُ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ in many other verses. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it the condition or the criterion by which a person is admitted into Al-Jannah. So he says, وَجَزَاهُمْ بِمَا صَبَرُوا جَنَّةً وَحَرِيرًا Because of their sabr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded them with Al-Jannah and the silk and there. And the angels, when they greet the people entering Al-Jannah, they will say to them, سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِمَا صَبَرْتُمْ فَنَعْنَ عَقْبَ الدَّامِ Peace be upon you because of your sabr. A great dwelling it is indeed. So a sabr is one of the qualities that only the human possess. The angels do not have it and the animals do not have it. The angels because it's not in their nature to have any temptations or any desires. That's why they do not have it. And the animals of course because the animals just follow their instinct. That's why the humans are the only one that have it. Not only that but the humans were born without it. That's why a kid whenever a child wants something he wants it and he wants it right away. There's no patience in there. The adults are the ones that develop this quality as they, as they grow up. And a sabr is required or is needed in matters of this life as well in matters of the hereafter. That's why whenever you have a goal, you need that sabr to pursue that goal. If a student is studying, is going to a school, he will not graduate without going through a lot of sabr. And the same thing when it comes to matters of the hereafter. And the greater the goal, the more the need for that sabr. That's why the people that need the sabr more than anybody else are the du'at, the Muslim workers. Because by definition, they're asking people to change certain ways. That's why there'll be a lot of hardship that's involved. And sabr is of four kinds. One of them, the first kind of sabr is when facing certain hardship, certain loss. You lose something, you lose someone. How will you react in that situation? A person may revolt, may object, or a person may accept. And if the person accepts, there'll be a reward. That's why Ali ibn Abi Talib عنه, said, if you have patience, somebody has lost his son. So he came to him in condolences and he told him that you have two options. You can be patient and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would decree will not change and you'll have the reward. Or if you can be impatient and whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed would still happen and you'll have the punishment. So certain things you cannot you don't have any choice but to accept them. Whether you scream, whether uh, you shout, whether you laugh, it's not going to change anything. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed to happen, had happened already. That's why when you're facing a loss or a hardship, you might just well accept it and have the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there'll be tremendous reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that regard. This is the first level of sabr and it's a great form of sabr. The reward is tremendous. The second, the second level of sabr is self-control when facing temptations or desires. See, the first kind of sabr is a state of mind, a state of heart. You accept or you object. Nothing is going to change whether you accept or object, but it's just an attitude. The second kind of sabr is a position or a stand that you take with regard to certain things that are happening around you. You have temptations around you. You have uh, all things, the desires, the things that are haram to look at, things haram to do. What will you do in that case? Will you respond or will you hold back? And this level of sabr is better even than the second one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna," That we will test you with the hardship 
and with the uh, and with the ease as a fitna to yourself or to your heart. Of course, a great name that comes to mind in here, a prophet that has a lot of that, is Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. When he was in the house of the Aziz of Egypt and he was tempted by that woman and at the end he chose to go to jail instead of staying there, instead of doing what she asked him for. The third level of sabr which is better than the first two is the sabr or the resistance or the patience in fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You wake up for Fajr for example, everybody's asleep and the bed is very comfortable especially toward the end of the night but you wake up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you fast. You abstain from eating and drinking. The whole world around you is eating and drinking, but you do not because you're fulfilling the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا فَاعْبُدْهُ وَالصَّبْرِ لِعِبَادَتِهِ هَلْ تَجِدْ هَلْ تَعْلَمْ لَهُ سَمِيًّا That this is a great form of sabr. The fourth level of sabr, which is better than the first three, is the sabr in the path of the da'wah. Why is it better than the others? Because the first three levels of sabr the benefit goes to you, yourself. But with the third level of sabr, the benefit goes to the other people. So you're persevering, you're patient for the sake of the other people. Because the da'wah has never been an easy job. Whenever you're conveying a message, you're asking people to do something different than the way they're used to. That's why there'll be resistance from the people themselves and from the environment where people do not like that message to be propagated. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is a great level of sabr that the five great prophets had a lot of. Of course, the other prophets all have that, but these five prophets have the most of, these are the prophets of Ulul Azm, the great five prophets, Nuh alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Fasbir kama sabara ulul azmi min al rasul. This is the greatest form of sabr because it is these people that have this kind of sabr that will carry the shoulder on their shoulder, the burden of the message. And without that, the message will not be propagated. How do we acquire the sabr? Insha'Allah, we'll discuss that in the next thought. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusufun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.